earlier in the day I drew Starcade 1989. Now this is my review on that said show. Starcade 1989 was um, kind of it's it's a it's a weird show. Um, it's very different. You know, most shows just has a whole lot of it has a huge card set with rivals, and you have you know. You know, rival versus rival. You know, what's the big point of this match? You know, why are these? Why do I care about these two facing off in this big rivalry? And they had of a big clash. And but this is not the normal type of pay-per-view card where you just have grudge matches or whatever. This is a tournament, but it's not like any other tournament where you had eliminations and everything. No, you have points. And it's round robin. So you have two separate tournaments going at it. And they're called the Iron Man tournament. You have the singles Iron Man tournament and the tag team Iron Man tournaments. And you have points. If you win your match via pinfall or submission, you get 20 points. If you win your match by countout, you get 15 points. If you won match by DQ, you get 10 points. If you drew, if you and your opponent went to a draw, you get five points. If you lost, you don't get any points. The thing is, though, is you only had four teams and you had four single competitors. You had Luger, Sting, Muda, uh, and uh, Flair. And then you had Rotowar, Steiner, Doom, and the Samoan SWAT team. So, basically, you'd have just these four teams battling each other. Four points, and whoever got the most points at the end win the whole tournament. And then these four guys, they would have separate matches with them, and whoever won out of the tournament, the most matches wins. Okay. So, neat concept. It's different, and we are going to get some good matches. There are a lot of good matches. There's not that many bad matches. There's only like maybe three bad matches, a couple of eh matches, but there's some really good matches here. Uh, the problem I had with this show is um, you you just see these guys. That's all you get to see. These are the only superstars or wrestlers you see on this card. You don't see Midnight Express. You don't see any other major WCW NWA star. That was on this, it was at the time. You didn't see anybody else. You just saw those guys that I just listed. Kind of a problem, but they were the top guys for a reason. So let's get to it. Alright, the very first match is the Steiner Brothers versus Doom. If you like Power Slams, this is the match. Power Slam Mania, running wild. Um, it's a so-so match. Steiners pick up the victory via count-out on Doom. Uh, so they're awarded 15 points in advance. And, um, I give it a 4 out of 10. It was a fine match. If you like power slams, there you go. A lot of power slams. Next up, we have Lex Luger versus Sting. This went to the very, very end. It went almost a time limit draw. Almost. Except the last 30 seconds. In the last 30 seconds of the match, you had Sting on the apron and Luger was inside. Now Sting was like so freaking tired for some reason. Or he just couldn't get Luger over. He, like he couldn't just... Get himself over the top rope with a clothesline and knock out Luger who was inside. The ref actually had to help Sting get back into the ring with the clothesline. And um, then Luger got a pinfall. He, he got a pinfall on Sting and he had to hook the ropes and everything. The finish, if, it, if that sounded confusing, that's because it was botched. But other than the botched finish, it was alright. Uh, I give it a 6 out of 10. It was good, but the botched finish did hurt it. Sting and Luger... 
Sting and Luger was being pushed at this time to be the men of the 90s, to be the biggest stars ever. But together, I don't know if they really had a good match together. I mean, their match at Super Brawl was all right. And just like this, it was so-so. It was good, but we could have got better. I give it a 6 out of 10. Um, next up, we have the Road Warriors defeating Doom. And they get a pinfall victory over Doom. Um, this was like the first match. Very power slam heavy. Towards the end, the Road Warriors were getting the ass kicked. But then all of a sudden... Um, Doom, by the way, is uh, Ron Simmons and Butch Reed, but they're wearing masks. So I think Ron Simmons, it looked like, was going for a pile driver on Animal. Hawk then off the top rope, decked Ron Simmons with a clothesline, and then they got the victory. Better match than the first, barely. 4.5 out of 10. Next up, Ric Flair defeats the Great Muda. This was... Two minutes long, barely two minutes. They got the, the they got their shit in as quickly as possible, as quickly as possible as Gary Hart got in there and Ole Anderson got in there and Arn Anderson got in there. There's a big fight on the outside, major chaos. Muda went for a moonsault. Ric Flair got the knees up, rolled him up. One, two, three. Ric Flair got the pinfall victory, and two minutes less than that. I, I am not ranking it. I'm not rating it. Because you can't really rate a match that's under two minutes. But it was fine. I wish they went a hell of a lot longer. I wish this match was ten minutes at least. Um, but it is what it is. Um, next up, we get a tag team dream match between the Steiner Brothers and the Road Warriors. Back in this time... This would be the ultimate tag team dream match. This was ugly. And I mean that in a good way. It was a good, solid match. The finish, uh, back, in the, back in the early days, they would ha do these kind of finish where like the wrestler would get a big backdrop move in or no, he would uh, the, one of the guys would get a back suplex in right and both men's shoulders would be on the mat but the guy who took the back suplex would get his shoulder up at this at the last second and the guy who gave the back suplex his shoulders would be pinned to the mat so that way the ref would see oh man the guy who took the back suplex got his shoulder up. That means they won the match because this guy actually accidentally pinned himself. That's basically what happened with the finish. Um, Road Warriors went for a variation of the Doomsday device. Uh, Animal did a back suplex as Hawk came off the top rope on Scott Steiner. But uh, Animal's shoulders were pinned to the mat as he did the move. And Scott Steiner at the last second got his shoulder up. And that's how he won via pinfall. That's how the Steiner brothers won this match. Good, solid match. I give it a 6.5 out of 10. Next up, we have an underrated gym. We have a forgotten classic here. These two freaking tore the house down earlier in the year with at the Great American Bash. And they did again here. This match was spectacular. I'm talking about Sting versus the Great Muda. This was a good to great match. I give it a 7.5 out of 10. But much like their earlier match from Great American Bash, it was just a little too short. Two more minutes, I would give it an 8 out of 10. And I give it a 7.5. Ah... Uh, Moving along here, new Samoan SWAT, uh, the new Wild Samoans, which is Fatu and Samoan Savage, they defeated Doom. This match fucking sucked. 3 out of 10, and that's being heavily generous. Lex Luger and Ric Flair went to a time limit draw. This match was 
great. Not as good as their match from Starcade, but it was great. Ric Flair locks in the figure four leg lock. 30 seconds to go. Lex Luger does not submit, and that's how it ends in a time limit draw. I give it an 8 out of 10. Very great match. Next up, we have the new Wild Samoans defeating the Steiner Brothers via de disqualification. Um, not much to it. Headbutts, power slams, body slams, slow wrist locks, wrist holds, kind of boring. I give it a 4 out of 10. And again, that's being fair. Next up, we have Lex Luger versus the Great Muda. This was um, average. Muda hits the green mist, and um, he gets disqualified. So Lex Luger gets the DQ victory. And I give that match a 5 out of 10. Leading up to the finals of the Tag Team Iron Man match. In order for the Road Warriors to win this whole thing, they have to win, period. If the Wild Samoans win, they win the whole thing. Road Warriors, if they, drew, if they went to a draw, then the Samoans and Steiners would draw, and then it'd be a draw. Anyways, Road Warriors win. This is a, just a typical kind of match. I give it a 4 out of 10. Not much to talk about. Main event, that's what I really want to talk about most. Ric Flair versus Sting. Sting had to beat Ric Flair via pinfall. If Ric Flair won by disqualification, he wins the whole thing. So in order for Sting to win this Iron Man tournament, he had to win by pinfall. If they went to a draw, Lex Luger wins. So, how did it go? It was fucking awesome. This match, when you talk about Sting versus Ric Flair, everyone talks about their Great American Bash match or their match from Clash of the Champions, and this kind of gets forgotten about. But this match is just as good as those matches. I give it an 8.5 out of 10. At the very end, it was kind of weird seeing this, but here comes the four horsemen, and they're shaking hands with Sting. And Sting joins the four horsemen. And you're thinking, Sting turned heel? No. Ric Flair is a good guy at this time, actually. And the four horsemen were good guys. But then all of a sudden, it was announced that Sting would get a world title match out of this. Because he won this whole thing. So then the four horsemen turned their backs on Sting and beat the crap out of him later on. Setting up a future match with them. Between Ric Flair and Sting. This match I give an 8.5 out of 10. So there you go. Starcade 1989 Future Shock. That's my review. Uh, so so pay per view. I give it a 5.5 overall. It had a neat concept. But I think kind of seeing the same guys. Really hurt it quite a bit. Not really having any rivalries. They put on some good matches. I do recommend watching Sting vs. Flair and Flair vs. Luger and Muda vs. Sting. Solid matches. I am Daniel Rock 08. And uh, before I leave, let's draw another one. And whatever I draw is my review tomorrow. So here we go. I will review tomorrow. This Tuesday in Texas. See ya.